Speed in Star Rail can be one of the most confusing mechanics to understand. There are many good speed guides out there from creators like Goba and Sweet Elite, which I personally recommend you go and watch, but I thought it would be fun to look at this topic from the angle of a blade main, since speed is so heavily tied into blades team building. So what is speed and how does it work? Well to start, I'm going to borrow Sweet Elite's analogy. Think of character turns like completing a lap around a 10 km track. Forgive me for these scuffed animations, I'm not well versed in animating things. Basically, every time your character finishes the lap, they get to take a turn. How fast your characters can run 10k is determined by their speed. So if you take the distance of 10 kilometers, divide it by the character's speed, you get the time it takes them to finish one lap. This time is considered the character's starting action value, and it counts down as your character runs their lap. When the action value reaches zero, that means your character finished their lap and gets to take a turn. So that's what these numbers mean here on the left side. You can turn this on in the settings over here. Basically, Sparkle needs another 54 minutes to finish her lap, and Branya needs another 59 minutes. So action value is essentially the time it takes your characters to complete their 10k run. So if you have 160 speed on your Branya, it will take her 62 and a half minutes to finish one 10k lap around the track. On a tangent, my personal best 10k time is 57 minutes, which means my speed stat in the game would be around 175 speed, which is not bad. Okay, but getting back on topic, now that we know how speed affects the time it takes your characters to take their turn, how does that play into speed breakpoints? Well, each cycle in the MOC and Pure Fiction has a time limit on them. And when that time limit is reached, the next cycle begins. So the initial cycle, or the zero cycle, has a generous 150 minute time limit for your characters to run their laps, while each subsequent cycle only gives you 100 minutes to act. How many turns your character can fit within each cycle comes down to whether or not they can finish their laps in time before the next cycle begins. Because the initial zero cycle gives us an extra 50 minutes on its timer, it's easier to act twice on cycle zero than it is on subsequent cycles. So if your goal is to only act twice on the very initial cycle, then the speed you require to achieve that is the infamous 133.4 speed breakpoint, or 134 speed rounded up. So if your character has 134 speed or more, they get to act twice on the very, very first turn. That's probably why you hear this number thrown around a lot. So any speed above 134 doesn't necessarily benefit you on the zero cycle unless you can manage to hit 200 speed on your characters, then you get to act three times on cycle zero. But hitting that high of a speed threshold is not feasible unless you get a bunch of speed buffs from external sources or through help from action advance. But before I talk about those, what if you don't care about zero cycling? Like let's say your fights last longer than cycle zero. Well, in that case, 134 speed would fall off slightly because it only gives you two turns on cycle zero. And then on cycle one and cycle two, you only get one action each. And it's not until cycle three that you get two actions again. So with 134 speed, you get in total six actions from cycle zero to three. If you manage to exceed 160 speed, then you get two actions on cycle zero and two actions on cycle one. With 172 speed, you get to have two actions on cycle zero, cycle one, and cycle two. And with 178 speed, you get to take two actions on cycle zero, one, two, and three. And if you hit 200 speed, you get three actions on cycle zero and two actions on every subsequent cycle. This is a table summarizing the major speed breakpoints and how many turns they give you. I would say the most common breakpoints are 120 to activate set effects because some sets like Sprightly Vonwack require 120 speed to activate. Then it's 134 speed to act twice on cycle zero. Then 160 speed to act twice on cycle zero and one. And then 200 speed to get the three actions on cycle zero. Okay, now we can talk about action advance. 
Action advance is like cutting the remaining distance short, or like Sweetly puts it, teleporting your character forward a certain distance towards the finish line. Sparkle's 50% action advance means she can remove up to 5,000 meters of the remaining track. So as long as Sparkle isn't more than twice as fast as your carry, she can instantly bring them to the finish line with her skill. Branya's 100% action advance means removing all of the remaining track and letting your character go instantly. So regardless of where they are on the track, Branya is able to teleport them to the finish line. That's why the uh, Unlimited Blade Works team, which has Sparkle and Branya, requires Sparkle to be faster than Branya while not being more than twice as fast as Blade. So when Sparkle finishes her first lap, she can instantly TP Blade to the finish line to let Blade act. And then Branya comes in right after to instant TP Blade once again. And then you rinse and repeat this. And if your Branya is 160 speed and your Sparkle's 161 or more speed, you can do this twice on the zero and first cycle. If you're going purely for a zero cycle clear, then you can leave Branya at 134 speed and Sparkle slightly faster than that. But then if you ever get slowed, your characters won't make it in time. If you can manage to hit 174 speed Branya and 175 speed Sparkle and pair them with Ron May and a copy of an R5 Dance Dance Dance, then you can effectively hit 200 speed and get three turns on cycle zero. Mr. Pokey had a video showing this and it's not the most relatable because one, you need very, very fast Sparkle and Branya, and two, you would need an R5 copy of DDD. Uh, alternatively, you could run Branya and Sparkle on the Eagle set, which will similarly action advance them by 25%. But having an Eagle set that gives you 174 speed on your character is even more unrelatable than having an R5 Dance Dance Dance. Unless you're someone who diligently farmed the Eagle set and got insanely lucky. But sadly, I'm nowhere close to this. Also, for this 200 speed tech, you have to ensure that your blade is over 100 speed or else he'll be too slow for Sparkle and Sparkle's action advance won't actually bring him to the finish line. Okay, now that we finished explaining speed and how it works, I'm going to go into team building scenarios and try to break down how certain teams are structured. So the most basic blade team revolves around Branya. And so there's a team called Fast Blade or Slow Branya, where Branya is at 134 speed and Blade is at 135 speed or higher. This way, your Blade will act first, and then Branya will come in after him and allow Blade a second turn in quick succession. Since both Blade and Branya are faster than 133.4 speed, they both get to act twice on cycle zero. So you get to do Blade, Branya, Blade, Blade, Branya, Blade for a total of four Blade actions in one cycle. The downside to this team is you likely have to use a speed boot on Blade, lowering the damage output of each attack, but you're trading that damage per attack with more attacks. So this is quite a strong setup and it's very easy to speed tune. However, after cycle zero, the next cycle only has time for one Blade Branya Blade. So this build falls off a bit if you can't zero cycle. You also have something called Fast Branya, where Branya is at 160 speed or higher and Blade is built with HP boots instead. And you can just use your fast Branya to match up Blade to her own speed. But with only Branya and Blade, this combination isn't too special since Blade will only get two actions on cycle zero and two actions on cycle one. However, if you have E2 Branya, then things get spicier. E2 Branya gives your unit a 30% speed buff. So a 160 Branya with a 132 speed Blade can get you 3 turns on cycle 0 and 4 turns on cycle 1. Basically it goes like Branya Blade, Blade Branya Blade on cycle 0, then Blade Branya Blade, Blade Branya Blade on cycle 2. At least I think that's how it works. I personally don't have E2 Branya, but from my understanding of speed, this should work. Alternatively, you could have E2 Branya at 134 speed and Blade on 106 speed, and you can have 3 Blade turns on cycle 0. 
Okay, now that we went over Blade and Branya combinations, we can add Sparkle into the mix, and with Sparkle, we unlock the very popular Unlimited Blade Works team, where both Sparkle and Branya continuously cycle Blade over and over again. If you're just looking to zero cycle, you can get away with Branya at 134 speed and Sparkle at 135 or more speed, and then Blade with no speed at all. This will allow you to go Sparkle, Blade, Branya, Blade, Sparkle, Blade, Branya, Blade. But this will fall off on subsequent cycles, so if you want a comfier time, Branya at 160 speed and Sparkle at 161 or more speed will allow you to keep four blade actions for both cycle 0 and cycle 1. Now, when I say like Branya at 160 and Sparkle at 161, Sparkle just needs to be faster than Branya. So if Branya is at like 166 speed, then Sparkle needs to be at 167 speed. So your Branya doesn't have to be 160 speed, right? It's just whatever speed Branya is at, Sparkle needs to be faster for this to work. Now, if you can push Sparkle and Branya to 174 and 175 speed and slot in your Ron May and have an R5 dance, 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 then we get that Mr. Pokey 200 effective speed 6 action blade team, which as of the current patch 2.2, I think it's the most optimal team comp for blade. But like I said, it's not very relatable. But what if there existed another comp that can consistently get you 6 blade actions in one cycle and at a much more relatable level of investment? So let's sub out Ron May for Robin. Robin's a new harmony support added in version 2.2. And with Robin, you can also form a pretty powerful zero cycle team. So I am gonna show you an example of this team in action here. With Branya at 160 speed and Sparkle at 161 or more speed, Robin will need 155 speed minimum for this to work. Robin also has to be on Sprightly Vonwack to get that extra action advance at the start of the fight. So all you have to do is immediately use Robin's ultimate after her second skill cast so that you can action advance your entire team while still leaving enough time on the clock to fit in two more rounds of Sparkle Blade Branya Blade before the cycle ends. And then once you've finished wave one, wave two, Basically, you still get to do your regular Sparkle, Blade, Branya, Blade, Sparkle, Blade, Branya, Blade. But now, hopefully your Robin has enough energy to have another ultimate, and you can use that ultimate at the very end of the cycle to then get your team one more round of Sparkle, Blade, Branya, Blade for another six actions even on wave two. So Unlimited Blade Works is very fun and I have many MOC Zero Cycle showcases of this team on my channel as well as ADK Pure Fiction runs. But what about potential new teams in the future? Maybe you need your Sparkle on another team or maybe you need Ron May on another team. Well, I've been having dreams of a new mommy character that resembles a Primo gem and can help drain Blade's HP every time he attacks, as well as boost Blade's speed by 30. Now, hypothetically speaking, if such a character existed, then there would be so many new team possibilities. This theoretical mysterious character, I will refer to as a Stellar Jade. Now, this Stellar Jade has some promising team comps with Blade. So, some basic info about Stellar Jade before I explain how the team works. Let's say Jade can action advance itself at the start of the fight by 50% and its skill can grant an ally 30 speed for 3 turns that counts down on its own turn like Fushren. That's pretty strong, right? If such a character were introduced, we can run Blade on at least 105 speed, Branya on 134 speed, and let Jade bring up blade speed to 135, overtaking Branya. So cycle zero will look like Jade, Branya, Blade, Jade, 
Blade Branya Blade, and if Branya is 160 speed, then Blade should be at 131 speed or higher, so that you can get Jade Branya Blade, Blade Branya Blade Jade, Blade Branya Blade, Jade Blade Branya Blade. This setup allows you to all in on Jade's personal damage. However, Blade is kind of missing a turn at the start because he doesn't magically overtake Branya right away for the very first action. And that's because by the time Jade buffs Blade's speed, he's already run half of the track at his slowest pace and is too far behind Branya that even with the speed boost, he can't overtake Branya before the finish line. Now the people at Jade Mains thought of this and they cooked up a solution to this problem. So I'll share their findings here. If you run Jade on Sprightly Vonwack, then that 40% action advance from Sprightly Vonwack on top of Jade's own action advance of 50% makes it so that Jade starts the fight with 90% action advance. And then because you need to trigger Sprightly Vonwack, Jade should theoretically be at 120 speed. And so with 120 speed and 90% action advance on Jade, if your Branya is 134 speed, then Blade at 108 speed will overtake Branya to give you that missing turn. So I cooked up another scuffed animation to show this. So just to reiterate, if your Jade's 120 speed on Sprightly Vonwack and your Branya is 134 speed, Blade at 108 speed will overtake Branya on that very first turn. However, if you can't zero cycle, then this will fall off on cycle one. So if you bump Branya up to 160 speed, then you also need to bump Blade up to 135 speed to make it so that he can still overtake Branya while also giving you both a strong cycle zero and a strong cycle one. Okay, all this is very good, but if Jade is only at 120 speed, as stated in the Jade mains calculations, then after cycle zero, she only gets one turn on cycle one because the timer for her second turn just nearly misses out the 250 time limit of cycle one. So instead, if you run Jade at 125 speed, this would allow you to run a 134 speed blade and let's Jade take two turns on cycle one for a total of four actions in the first two cycles instead of just three. But does this fourth action help? Remember, Jade's skill only lasts three of her own turns. So if her fourth turn comes up, she will have to use it to refresh Blade's um, debt collector status so maybe it's not that helpful to give her a fourth turn, but that extra skill will generate her more energy and that might allow her to get her ultimate up and that could justify having that fourth turn. Because of how like skill point positive this whole team is, I don't think it's a detriment to have that fourth turn in there. So for me, I don't see a downside of having 125 speed Jade outside of it being a little harder to build for. There are also other reasons to build some extra speed past 120 that I'll mention later, so just keep this concept in mind. But if you're purely zero cycling, the 120 speed will work fine because after you clear wave 1, whether you have 120 or 125 speed, Jade will only get one action on the second wave of enemies. With this Blade and Jade team, there's going to be a lot of follow-up attacks triggering. And so any meta slave will probably be wondering, what about Robin? All right, if we insert Robin into this team, things start to get way too dank, but I'll try my best to break this down. So with Jade at 120 speed and Branya at 160 speed, Blade at 135 speed, and Robin at 155 speed. You get this sort of a turn chart where Jade goes first, speeds up Blade, and then you go Blade, Branya, Blade, 
And then you have Robin's ultimate ready. Robin's ultimate will action advance everyone. And then you're going to have Jade, Blade, Branya, Blade. And then another Blade, Branya, Blade before the end of cycle zero. This will allow your Blade to have six actions on cycle zero. And that's really, really strong. But remember when I was talking about having Jade be a little bit faster than 120 speed? Well, the reason I say that is because if you look at this turn chart, Jade gets an action at the very beginning of the fight, but then she only gets one more action. So she doesn't really benefit from Robin's action advance because she was technically supposed to have a turn around here anyways. And so Robin's action advance doesn't actually give Jade an extra turn. So if you speed up Jade just a little bit, so you give Jade 127 speed instead of 120 speed, then you can actually get Jade to go right before Robin's second turn. So before Robin does her action advance, so you basically your team your team rotation looks like Jade, Robin, Blade, Branya, Blade, Jade, Robin, Blade, Branya, Blade, Jade. Or maybe Jade goes before Blade's second. Anyways, like you, you get the point. And then that lets you have three Jade actions on cycle zero instead of two. And so this is another instance where having Jade be a little faster than 120 speed might actually be a benefit. The problem here, though, is if your Robin is faster than 155 speed, so let's say, for example, your Robin's 157 speed, then Jade at 127 speed will no longer cut it because Robin is too fast now, and so your Jade also has to speed up to keep up. And so with 157 speed Robin, your Jade needs to be 128 speed. And then as Robin gets faster, if you still want Jade to go right before Robin's action advance, then you have to in turn increase Jade's speed to keep up with Robin. But there's still one problem with this setup. While the first wave of enemies will completely get obliterated, when it comes to wave two, if Jade is only at 127 speed, she will only get one action on the second wave or if Robin gets her ult up, two actions on the second wave, which isn't optimal. So if you can get Jade up to 134 speed, then while the first wave will remain relatively unchanged, when the second wave spawns, Jade will be able to get two actions on the second wave, and if Robin gets her ult up, three actions on the second wave. Also, putting Jade on speed boots here isn't actually that bad because Robin provides insane amounts of attack buffs. Okay, that was a lot of yapping, and I didn't even touch on like damage potential of these teams because I don't have the concrete numbers of how much damage Jade can actually deal, and it will also vary based on how many enemies you're facing and how many cycles you will take to clear content. Basically, this is just a sort of appetizer so that when Jade comes out, or I mean, if Jade is a character that could come out, then you have an idea of like where to place your character's speed and an idea of the turn order and turn manipulation of these teams. So my recommendation is obviously at this current point in time, the Unlimited Blade Works team, where Sparkle and Branya are 160 speed or faster, and Blade is on HP boots. That's the team that I like the most. And then my preference between Ron May or Robin, I think if you're going sustainless, they're both equally viable for zero cycling. I probably prefer Ron May slightly for more consistency just because she lets you break enemies and keeps them broken for longer, so there's less RNG in terms of enemies slowing your characters. My issue with trying to zero cycle with Robin is that because of how fragile your speed tuned team is, 
Any slows could cause you to reset if you're trying to zero cycle. And so Ron May just has a little higher consistency. But with Jade coming out, I think Robin might actually, at least from my feels crafting, I guess, I feel like Robin might actually be the better teammate there just because theoretically you should be getting a lot of follow-up attacks with the Jade Blade team. Jade can also make use of every single buff that Robin gives. As for what I'm personally going to go for, I'm going to aim for 120 speed Jade to put in this Robin team and if I ever manage to get a faster Jade without sacrificing the attack boots then I will obviously try to go for the 127 speed Jade or if you're considering speed boots then the 134 speed Jade is definitely the most optimal but we'll need numbers to decide whether speed boots or attack boots are better and especially if you're running Robin, speed boots might actually be the play. Okay, so that was my speed guide. I don't know if I did a good job. I tried to do my best explaining this, and I hope I didn't make any mistakes in this video. I'm not really a theory crafter. I have a day job, and that's already enough brain drain for me. But I couldn't really find any good resources on proper speed tuning for blade teams. And ironically, the best resource I found was on Jade mains, not Blade mains. And also, I realized the importance of, like, collaboration. Because I was doing most of this myself, and I realized that, like, it's quite beneficial to bounce ideas off of other people. Because one person can't really think of every possible scenario, and I probably missed a lot in this video that you guys might mention in the comments like hey what about this team or hey what about this scenario but we still have time before jade releases and so i'll be looking at your comments and i don't normally tell people to comment on my videos or anything but with the amount of effort that i put into this one it would mean a lot if if you guys left something down there anyways i have a guarantee saved up for Jade, so when she comes out, I'll definitely build and test her. Sadly, I won't get early access, and because I'm kind of discussing dream-related content, maybe I'll be blacklisted, but I hope some of you guys found this fun. That paradise may savor it for me.